We don't talk about bat feet enough. Their wings get all the attention for making them the only mammals that really fly and don't just glide. Their weird little faces run the gamut from cute to, well, charitably we'll call them less conventionally cute. But their feet just seem like feet. At most, we really only think about them as a bat's means for hanging upside down in that signature batty way. That is, until you see what the greater bulldog bat can do with its feet. The Bizarre Beast Pin Club is open for subscriptions for the whole month. Subscribing helps us keep this channel going. Sign up by October 20th and the first pin you will get will be one of these bizarre bats. And if you want more cool merch and bonus facts, stick around after the end of the episode. Noctilio leporinus, also known as the Greater Bulldog Bat, lives throughout Central and South America. These bats roost in trees, caves, sea caves, and just about any other convenient shelter they can find. And they're usually near bodies of water. They weigh between 50 and 90 grams and have a wingspan of about 50 centimeters. What you probably notice first is the Greater Bulldog Bat's distinctive facial features that give it one of its two common names. As bat faces go, this may be a memorable one, but it isn't all that bizarre. Instead, what's odd about the greater bulldog bat is what gives it its other common name, the fisherman bat. Like a lot of bats, greater bulldog bats eat insects that they catch in the air. And that fits with our typical bat expectations. They fly around eating other stuff that flies around. But Unlike a lot of bats, these guys also hunt fish. Insects still make up the majority of what they eat, but fishermen bats consistently have fish in their diets all year, especially during the dry season. And it's not just that they eat fish, they'll often specifically ignore other available prey in favor of the fish they're hunting. So how does a bat come to catch fish? Fish. We're used to the idea of bats eating insects, fruit, and sometimes even blood. But a nocturnal flying predator catching underwater prey? That's a little stranger. And it's not like catching a swimming thing while flying is unheard of in nature. Lots of predatory birds do it. But they spot fish with their super powerful eyesight. So how does the fisherman bat do it in the dark? Echolocation alone isn't enough to locate fully submerged fish. The sound waves can't reliably penetrate through the water from the air. Instead, this species uses its echolocation to search for the tiniest disturbances that might indicate prey breaking the surface or swimming just below it. A fisherman bat begins by flying about 20 to 50 centimeters above the water, making a characteristic pattern of chirps for finding those little disturbances. If it senses movement, it flies closer to the source, adjusting its chirp pattern for its proximity to the target, and prepares to drag its especially large feet across the water. The fisherman bat then rakes along the surface with its huge claws, attempting to hook a fish. If it catches one, it'll keep flying while passing the speared fish up to its mouth to chomp on it a little. Then it will use its big cheek pouches to store the half-eaten fish while continuing continuing to hunt. If there aren't any obvious splashes or jumping fish, the greater bulldog bat may also make longer raking passes in areas that recently had a lot of fish activity, or even in spots where it remembers successfully fishing in the past. In every case, the key to the bat's fishing success is its big ol' feet. The fisherman bat's legs are longer than the legs of most bats, and their feet are disproportionately huge. They can be almost double to quadruple the size of the feet you'd find on bats that don't catch fish. Despite plenty of other differences between them, all bat species that fish do so via the same basic method. And as a result, they all have the same kinds of foot adaptations. And although fishing behavior has convergently evolved in bats multiple times, greater bulldog bats are the only bat species to make fishing such a steady portion of their overall hunting behavior. So how did they, or any of the other fishing bats, get to this point in the first place? Since airborne night fishing is such a challenge, the evolution of this behavior in bats is 
isn't fully understood. With something like a 2% success rate at the best of times, fishing doesn't exactly seem like the most intuitive bat specialization. Scientists generally think that it started with bats catching insects or even slow or dead fish on the water's surface. And this tracks with some of what we see in greater bulldog bats nowadays. While they don't use their feet to catch insects in flight, they do use them to snag prey off the ground, including crabs, beetles, and crickets. This hunting versatility could potentially have favored an ancestor with more grabby feet. Lots of fish or bugs would likely have had to have been on the surface of the water a lot of the time for their current fishing behavior to have developed into a lasting adaptation. But we do see both their general hunting technique and physical features like their cheek pouches in the closely related lesser bulldog bat, which only eats insects from the water. So these seemingly specialized traits could have initially evolved for hunting a whole different prey. The nutritional benefits of eating fish may have then been enough to reward the greater bulldog bat's ancestors for adapting their insect hunting behavior towards something more specific and difficult, opening up the path to their current ecological niche. It's a pretty classic kind of evolution trade-off. As long as fish have a lot more calories than bugs, bats can have a lower success rate at catching them and still come out ahead of eating a bunch of the more easily caught prey. However the behavior began and evolved, it certainly resulted in a weird and cool bat. And the bulldog bat's unique hunting style comes along with another interesting behavior, something called lunar phobia. Lunar phobia is a behavior where an animal preferentially avoids going out when the moon is brightest. This might at first sound less than intuitive. How does a nocturnal animal have the time to get anything done if it's avoiding the sun and the moon? But lunar phobia really just means waiting to go out until the darkest part of the night, or else sticking to areas of higher shadow cover. This can be a way to avoid being spotted by predators, or to avoid being spotted by prey who are lunar phobic themselves. Lunar phobia is common in bats, especially in species that live in the tropics. And among those, bat species that hunt over water have an especially high rate of lunar phobia compared to bats with other foraging habitats. For the greater bulldog bat, the main driver for its lunar phobia doesn't necessarily seem to be predator risk. They've even been observed preferentially hunting on moonless nights in areas of high artificial light. If being spotted by a predator was their main concern, it would make more sense for them to avoid brighter areas like these. Instead, their lunar phobia is most likely a strategy for maximum fishing success, at least in cases where their prey is attracted to light. Artificial lights are even more enticing to fish when there's less ambient natural light, which is to the bat's advantage. By waiting for especially dark nights, they can hunt when fish are most concentrated together. And even if, in this case, it's a learned behavior resulting from human presence, it's still one more quirk to add to the list for the fisherman bat. Evolution is often the totally wacky outcome of a very specific set of environmental circumstances, leading to an animal occupying an equal specific niche. Sometimes we can trace all that specificity back through time and figure out exactly why some animals are the wonderfully weird way they are. Other times, we still have more digging to do if we want to find satisfactory answers to those questions. Species like the greater bulldog bat give us examples of both physical and behavioral adaptations odd enough to get us thinking about those questions in the first place. So while we ponder, we may just find ourselves left talking more about bizarre bat feet. Joining the Pin Club at BizarreBeeShow.com helps us keep making these videos. If you want the Greater Bulldog Bat to be your first pin, subscribe by October 20th. And don't forget to check out Complexly.store for all of our other merch. Other merch like this brand new pumpkin toadlet hat, this knit beanie is perfect for keeping you warm and for giving you an excuse to share all the best pumpkin toadlet facts. Oh, this little orange guy? Yeah, it's a pumpkin toadlet. They're very poisonous, and some of them are so small they can't even hear their own calls. Actually, let's just watch this video. You need to see their jumps. Get your own pumpkin toadlet hat at complexly.store. And now for some bonus facts.
Greater bulldog bats roost together in large groups, so it makes sense that they'd also hunt with company. Bats that fly around eating insects have lots of three-dimensional space to maneuver in without crashing into each other. But bats that rake along on a single flat plane, often in a pretty small area, have a much higher risk of colliding. And smacking into each other and falling into the water would put the unlucky bats at the mercy of predatory fish. To avoid this, greater bulldog bats honk at each other as a proximity alert while fishing. The approaching individuals lower the pitch of their calls down an octave to sound a warning. And both bats veer safely away from each other to keep on hunting fish instead of being hunted by them. Greater bulldog bats are also one of the loudest bats ever recorded and are among the loudest animals. One study from 2008 found that they averaged almost 140 decibels measured 10 centimeters from the bat's mouth. For comparison, home fire Fire alarms can be about 108 decibels. Normal conversation is in the 60 to 70 decibel range. And take this one with a grain of salt because we found it on Reddit. Several of Taylor Swift's eras shows in the US hit around 120 decibels. But don't worry about getting yelled at by a greater bulldog bat if you ever happen to visit their home range. Their calls are too high pitched for us to hear. Mm -hmm.